Hi friends, Colleen Beamish here. Thank you so much for joining me for another card video. Today's video will actually feature three cards, all using the same color scheme. I'm participating in the hashtag manuary challenge over on Instagram. This challenge um, was created by Crystal Kamara just this year um, because she realized, as I think many of us have realized, that creating masculine cards can be really tricky and difficult, especially when a lot of um, styles of stamp sets and things are more feminine or, you know, florals and things. Not that those can't be on masculine cards, but um, I think a lot of us struggle with making cards for guys. So... I'm going to face this challenge head on, try my best. It has definitely proved to be a challenge thus far because I was really stamp from Pink Fresh Studio. I haven't used this stamp before, but it's a lot of fun, very cool design, a little tricky once you take apart all the pieces because then it's a bit of a struggle to line them all up perfectly, but I uh, masked off the bottom half of the card base and then I used uh, the stamp market ink in the color Rusty to stamp down those first sections of the design. Now I'm going to pop all the pieces back into the stamp and then take out the ones that I want for the second layer of stamping, I guess you could call it. I'm doing every two, so it's kind of like a, a three color rotation or pattern. And the other colors I will be using are Stardust from Concord and Ninth and Peacock from Concord and Ninth. I think if you just wanted to use one brand of inks, you definitely could. Instead of using Rusty, you could use Concord and Ninth's Marmalade color. Or if you wanted to stick with the Stamp Market, you can definitely use their other colors. Um, similar to this color scheme would be their color Curry and then I think the color Jade. Unfortunately, I don't have their Jade color yet. So I decided just to mix brands because um, these colors were really speaking to me and this is what I had on hand. So this is me stamping the Stardust down and then I'll go ahead and stamp the Peacock. Um, unfortunately, my camera cut out so you don't get the unmasking reveal, but you can see there uh, what it ended up looking at, like. So now I'm taking the uh, Simon Says Stamp Stop Drop Party Stamp Set by Kathy Zilski, and I'm just going to take this big, bold, happy birthday sentiment. I love this stamp set, especially for masculine cards, because it has a lot of, like, just straightforward stamps as well as some funny ones. Um, so I actually stamped down the happy birth the HBD three times because I wanted it to be really dark and solid, and then I stamped happy birthday dude underneath it, and that's all using Gina K. Um, black amalgam ink. So that was my first card, very clean and simple. And I'm going to make another one, this one featuring primarily card stocks. Now, I don't have the rusty color card stock from the stamp market, so I had to make my own using the ink pad. At first, you saw there I was trying to go paper to ink pad, but then I realized it's much easier just to take the ink pad to the paper. So I just kind of moved around on the paper until I have some nice saturation. It's not completely even, but once I cut it down into strips like I'm going to do, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really make a difference. It's not noticeable. So I'm just going to um, dry that with my heat gun. When you have that much ink, I didn't want to wait for it to dry. And I cut it into quarter inch strips. Now I'm just going to arrange these on my card as I'm imagining it. Um, at first I was thinking kind of a weaving pattern. Uh, I was... I don't know, just kind of testing things out. And I liked how this looked, um, just kind of layering them up the card from the bottom. I did another card with a similar design, which you can check out over on my Instagram. That's at humorbean underscore cards. I will link that down in the description if you want to check it out, because I do have a card over there that's more feminine and um, light colors with some snowflakes and things from the Simon Says Stamp Card Kit. So definitely go check that out on my Instagram. Now to adhere these strips to the card, I'm using some craft foam that I cut down into strips. And then I'm using double-sided tape to adhere the craft foam to the strip and then the strip to the paper. Um, if I were to do this again, which technically I did by making that other card, I would use liquid adhesive. I don't know why I used uh, double-sided adhesive, just because when you use double-sided adhesive, it doesn't have any give. Once you stick it down, it's stuck, you know? Whereas with uh, liquid adhesive, I would have had some time to kind of push it around, make sure I liked how it was lined up. Um, so if you're doing 
If you're going to attempt a similar card, I definitely recommend liquid adhesive. And also, you should mark where you actually need the foam and where it's going to be off the card, which I will demonstrate a little bit in the video what I'm talking about when I say that. So I'm just lining these up. Um, I didn't really measure an angle or anything, and in watching this video back, I can tell it's not exactly perfect, but that's okay with me. I'm, I was just eyeballing it, just having fun. If you're worried about it, definitely measure it out. Use a compass or something, I don't really know, but um, I was trying to use the grid lines on my mat so it wasn't too far off, and honestly, I like the result. I don't think uh, there's a noticeable issue. I also wanted to fill in the corners a little bit more, so I just took a couple more orange strips and just filled in that bottom corner, and I'm framing it, making sure I like how it looks. I was debating adding some more strips at the top and decided first I would cut off all the excess and then make a decision. Uh, and I love the clean look. It looks so nice once you cut off all the extra strips. I did decide to go ahead and put some uh, yellow strips at the top. Uh, this is what I meant by marking it, just taking a pencil and marking down where you actually need the foam to be and again I just did the same way of adhering it. I'll adhere the rest of the strip that goes over top of the other strips um, at the end. If I were to make this card again I don't think I would add another strip there. I really liked how it looked with the orange on the top and the bottom of the colored section but it is what it is. I don't I don't dislike the result. I just might not add that final strip if I did it again. So now, now I'm going to go ahead and adhere the bottom parts of each strip down. Uh, again, don't use double-sided adhesive for this. It just makes everything more difficult. I don't know why I wasn't just like, maybe I should stop and change the plan. I powered through. It is what it is, but take my advice. Liquid adhesive, that's all. So I went ahead and did that for the rest of the strips. Um, I think pretty much all of them needed some extra adhering down. Not Maybe not the bottom blue one, but because it's so far tucked under. Um, and then I'll just stamp the sentiment. Same sentiment from the first card. Keeping it clean and simple. I really like how that looks. It would be cool if you did the design from the top as well and then stamped in the middle. Um, I think that would look really awesome if you wanted to try that out too. Now I'm going to do another card. This one I'm doing some ink to paper, you know, classic technique, messy, just kind of having fun with it. I attempted to make this card, I think, three times. And then I was just like, you know what, just stick the ink on the paper because I, w I was struggling with ideas. This would be way easier if I had three ink cube size uh, inks because it's much easier to do the small swatches with a smaller ink pad. But I had to make do with what I got, so um, I struggle a little bit with the bigger ink pad. Just I figured going up and down would be easier, and I uh, go back to it a couple times. But this is the easiest way to just throw a card together, I think. It's just, just make a colorful section, add some black and white, and there you go. So I got a little more aggressive that time with the ink, and I just keep going back. I think I regret that last one because all it did was put some stray ink over on the side, but it is what it is. And then I wanted it to be a little higher up on the card because it was kind of a little too low. Um, so I just add some more blue at the top and I like how that looks. And also I want, I should mention, I made sure not to put the blue and the orange next to each other because that would make brown and we don't want brown. And they didn't really, none of the colors really mixed or anything, but that I was definitely trying to be cautious about it. Now I'm using this banner from... I believe it's a Avery L stamp set. I will link it down in the description with all the other supplies in this video. I can't remember the name right now. And I'm using some liquid adhesive from Gina K to adhere this to the card, knowing that I shouldn't try to use double-sided adhesive again because I was being silly. So I'll just go ahead and adhere both of these down. And I think it just adds a nice like birthday celebration touch to it without too much like going on. I like to keep I wanted the colors to really be like the, the focal or the pop of color and the rest will just be like really clean and simple black and white. So now I'm going to put a tag in the center. Um, I'm using this tag die from a scrapbook.com tags, I think it's a tag builder set. There's like 20 different tag sizes in it, it's huge. Um, so I just use one of those to cut out this tag from some white cardstock. And then I'm just uh, using some twine to add a little bit of a textural, you know, fun aspect to this card. 
and then I will get to stamping. So I stamped out the same exact sentiment from before, the HBD, and this time I cut it out so that each letter was kind of individual. individual. I could move it around, arrange it however I wanted. I played with it going vertically or like kind of being bunched together, um, but I eventually just went with the classic horizontal. And then I also, um, off screen, I just heat embossed the uh, happy birthday dude onto some black cardstock using white embossing powder. Now I'm taking the stamp set from Felicity Jane, which I feel like maybe some card makers might not know about Felicity Jane. They're more of a scrapbooking uh, company, but I love this brand. I think their products are so pretty. And this was one of their stamp sets. It's actually the Taylor stamp set. And it just has these really pretty patterns that you can stamp down onto whatever. I think it's perfect. It's the perfect size to use on cards. And I felt like this card just needed something textural something additional so I'm going to heat emboss these patterns there's the first one is kind of a I don't know a plaid I guess you could call it and then stars and polka dots and I just emboss that in clear embossing powder um, I think it just adds a really uh, just a detailed touch to the card it would also be pretty if you heat emboss it in white but I didn't want it to be I just wanted it to be really subtle so now I'm popping up the tag on the card using some foam tape uh, you know, dimension is life. Who says that? I think Laura Basson says that. Anyway, I'm following her, uh, her style here. Pop it up. And then I'm going to adhere the sentiment down onto the tag. Um, again, I was kind of, I played around with the sentiment going at the same angle as the tag, but decided to just do it straight on. And I didn't pop those up. I just adhere them straight down to the tag using some liquid adhesive, um, I think I've ranted about liquid adhesive enough, so I won't mention that it was a much better idea. I just mentioned it. Anyway, moving on. Now for the D, I want to adhere the D partly on the tag and partly off. And the part that's off the tag will definitely need some foam tape behind it because, um, you don't want it to go through the mail and get, like, squashed or folded or something. I don't know if that would actually happen, but... You don't want to take the chance. So, and then with the H, there's only a little corner hanging off the edge of the tag. So I just took a tiny square of foam tape. I'll use my tweezers and I'll just slide it underneath that um, bottom corner of the letter. So that is all adhered on. And then I'll just take some liquid glue and stick my uh, the rest of the sentiment on as well. And I thought I was all done with the card. I don't know if you guys do this, but when I'm not sure, I put it on like a desk or something or a dresser across the room. I walk away and look at it from across the room. And if I like how it looks, like I can imagine it in someone's home, I'm good with it. But this one was still missing something. So I took my uh, Pilot G2 pen and I just did a uh, dotted line around the tag. And I think that was just like the perfect final touch. So this is my third card. And um, I'm so glad you could join me to see me make all three of these cards. I hope it inspired you to maybe pick out a color scheme, try it in some different styles. And yeah, I hope I could provide some inspiration for you. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please, please, please subscribe. It means so much to me. And uh, yeah, I hope to bring you some more crafty uh, content soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.